Before the break, I told you about the former president's penchant for gaslighting and how it fueled the big lie and the big mess democracy in America is in right now. As we look toward the midterms, now just days away, anxiety over the future of democracy is palpable. The warning flags that started to go up before Trump was even in office have burned up. Our democracy is now a four-alarm fire. Now, some people smelled the smoke before others. Here's an excerpt from an essay by one of our next guests, guests Sarah Kenzior. Quote, if Trump loses, neither he nor his followers will take it well. Some pundits whether, wonder whether Trump will even concede. On August 1st, Trump declared that the election will be rigged, a preemptive move to delegitimize a possible loss as his poll numbers fall. The next day, Trump's advisor, Roger Stone, proclaimed there will be a bloodbath if the election is stolen. When I interviewed Trump supporters in March, several told me they would form militias if he did not get the nomination, and other reporters have heard the same. Trump's loss could be the cause that unites disparate hate groups across the country, potentially leading to standoffs against governments like that of the Bundys in Oregon or to violent clashes like the neo-Nazi rally in Sacramento, end quote. Now, Sarah Kenzior didn't write that about the 2020 election. She wrote that in 2016, before that election. Two years later, Sarah Kenzior and Andrea Chalupa started a podcast called Gaslit Nation, both experts on corruption and rising autocracy. They discuss and analyze threats to democracy here at home and around the world. The co-hosts of Gaslit Nation join me now. Andrea Chalupa is the author of Orwell and the Refugees, the untold story of Animal Farm, and Sarah Kenzior, author of several books, including They Knew. How a con Culture of Conspiracy Keeps America Complacent. Welcome to the show to both of you. Thank you for being with us. I've been following uh, your work for a long time. Sarah and I have had a chance to talk on, on TV in the past. Um, all the horrible things that you have predicted and written about and talked about and podcasted about, Sarah, are coming true. Um, you saw this coming. You called it by its name. And we're here. We're at a point where people believe BS and will cast ballots on it on Tuesday. Yeah, and I think uh, when you're looking at this, you need to not look at only Trump and his criminal cohort, but at institutional failure. You're seeing a lot of people right now uh, feigning surprise over the fact that it's come to this. And the reason that they feign shock is to avoid accountability. Trump announced his plans. He was very blatant, as you saw in that excerpt, about what he was going to do. So did the people in his fold. There were a number of exit ramps off this highway to hell. And our officials chose not to take them. Our institutions have also failed us. So I hope the American people uh, turn to their moral compass, because that is what will guide you in this time, uh, especially as uh, you know, windows for information close, access to information closes. Um, that's going to be very important. Back in 2016, I also wrote another essay saying to write down who you are, what you believe in, what are your values, what are your expectations of government. And if you find yourself acting uh, in a way that feels strange or unfamiliar a few years later, look back at that essay and remember who you are. And not everybody did that, but it's, it's never too late to start because that is what part of, of gaslighting is. It's making you lose your sense of um, psychological security on, under um, unwavering waves of abuse and propaganda. So it's, it, it's interesting to, to see it that way, right? To understand gaslighting as abuse. It's a form of psychological abuse. Uh, but Andrea, you, you and Sarah have studied this around the world and every uh, expert on fascism or authoritarianism or dictatorship or the loss of democracy says this playbook is almost identical to things we've seen both in history and that are playing out, in fact, right in this moment in a world in which democracy is slipping away and weakening. Yeah, without question. So this November marks the start of the 90th anniversary of Stalin's genocide of famine in Ukraine, if you want to talk about disinformation and gaslighting and dictatorship's playbook of propaganda. Um, so 90 years ago, back in 1933, Stalin and the Kremlin organized a famine. They deliberately mass murdered as, as many people as they possibly could, the vast majority in Ukraine. Uh, authoritarian experts like Timothy Snyder and Anne Applebaum have pointed out that this is genocide. And they're pointing out today that this genocide is repeating today, 90 years later. And um, so that's why it's so troubling when you look at Putin, who has a dictatorship, of course, but he also has a base of supporters because dictators need a base of supporters in order to protect themselves and stay in power. And that base, just like Trump's base, has been brainwashed, has, has been pumped full of disinformation on state TV. You've had a 
Kremlin takeover with the lackeys of, who served the Kremlin taking over uh, Russian state TV over a series of years. And that's why it's so troubling when you have people like Elon Musk who are parroting Kremlin talking points now taking over our town square of Twitter, where Sarah and I first met each other, where we organized to do our work, where we encourage our community of Gaslit Nation listeners to make phone calls, to knock on doors, to fight for our democracy, to be a thorn in the side of authoritarians, to run for office. We have several listeners of Gaslit Nation who are now running for office. And the fact that Elon Musk is coming in, you know, Mr. Kremlin talking points to try to threaten all that is very scary. And it's very important to have these conversations about the dictatorship playbook and gaslighting and how it all works so people are aware and can protect themselves. So, Sarah, when people hear this and they say, good story, not us. Uh, Russia's not us, Iran's not us, uh, Brazil's not us, Philippines is not us. Uh, what do you say to Americans who, who, you're right, it's not us, but democracy can slip away. Obama was talking about this in Philadelphia yesterday. He said it can slip away and it becomes very, very hard to rebuild it once you've realized that, oh, we've just, we've just lost this. Yeah, I mean, people always like to say they didn't realize that it could happen here. But the thing is, it has happened here. You know, we were never a complete democracy. Uh, you know, we were founded on slavery, on Native American genocide. And the ideals that we had on paper were very different um, than what was put into practice. And so the goal should be uh, to move toward those ideals. But the thing is, one of the greatest weapons of a aspiring autocrat is time. It's the ability to run out the clock. That's why Andrea and I and so many other uh, scholars of autocracy were warning people back in 2015, back in 2016, that they needed to act fast because every year that goes by, uh, you lose the opportunity to defeat this. And as I said, you know, this battle is not lost because a lot of this is, is a battle inside your mind. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that American autocracy is going to look different, of course, than it is uh, in other countries. You know, it's going to exploit, for example, our infotainment complex. It's going to exploit, as it is right now, our social media monopolies. There's not going to be like a repeal of the First Amendment. There's going to be manipulations and algorithmic silos and all these other ways of trying to control what information people have so that they could make political decisions based on very narrow and selective information. And so I'm worried about a lot of things. I'm worried about autocracy. I'm also worried about violence. I'm worried about these secessionist movements. As someone who lives in Missouri, as someone who lives, you know, in the heart of the country, uh, this kind of talk um, disturbs me greatly because I think that that might be the overarching plan, not necessarily kind of a Hitler, Stalin, top-down fascism, but a bunch of of uh, violent feuding oligarchies taking advantage of incredible violent, uh, incredibly vulnerable and terrified citizens, regardless of their political mm -hmm. predilection, regardless of who they voted for, and trying to push them uh, toward violence. Stand by. I want to continue this conversation on the other side of the break. Andrea Chalupa and Sarah Kenzior, uh, stay with us. We'll be right back.